Hey YouTube, XCT here. In the last video we got access to a virtual desktop environment and now we want to get a sliver beacon onto the target. It should be able to reach back to us via the web proxy without getting detected. For that we are going to develop a simple payload that will contain the shellcode as a normal function inside the binary. So there will be no process injection, no create thread and so on. The goal here is to evade our target's AV without over-engineering the loader. In later videos we will also explore other approaches. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to generate sliver shellcode, just like this. Um, I'm using generate beacon because I want a beacon and not a session. Remember you can always like switch from a beacon to a session but not the other way around, so I think it's good to start like this. Um, and it should call back every 30 seconds with some randomization here. Okay, then I'm telling it to use the HTTP protocol on these endpoints here, which is my IP. And I'm giving it the proxy parameter so it connects to the company's web proxy. In theory, this shouldn't be possible because Sliver is supposed to be proxy aware, but I had some issues with it. And then, like at the end here, I have a second endpoint, which is the same IP with the parameter driver win enet. And this is basically using the Windows libraries to connect instead of the Go libraries. I found that in this combination, it's pretty reliable, it will connect back. Um, I'm not exactly sure which of the endpoints actually is the one that's working. Um, you might want to experiment with that. Um, this is just what I've been using. Then I'm giving it a name and where I want to save it to, which is here my temp directory. I'm also giving it dash G, which is basically disabling Shikata Ganai. I don't want to use that because we will encrypt our payload ourselves, so we don't need Shikata Ganai to do it for us. I'm also going to do skip symbols, which is um, leaving the sliver strings inside the binary, um, which is obviously not great from a detection standpoint, but the binary will be a lot smaller. And even if they're in there, it won't get detected from Defender or Avira, so I don't really care. So let's do it like this. And here we go, it's already generated. The next thing I want to do is encrypt this payload. So I'm now in this directory where I put the http.bin file, which is our shellcode. And I also have a Python script here, which is rc4.py. All the script is basically doing is it's taking in a key and a file name, and then it will rc4 encrypt the whole shellcode and just write it back to disk as um, yeah, http.bin.enc. Um, this algorithm you can just look up online or uh, I don't know, ask ChatGPT, it's nothing special. So for the key, I'm using this string, advapi 32dl um, just because if someone is like looking with strings at the binary, this looks pretty insuspicious, I guess, because that's like a DLL name, right? And then the binary, and now it has written the encrypted one. The next thing I want to do is specific to the way the loader is going to look. Um, let me just do it for now and then show you later why we do it. All right, so I'm running this command here. And what this is doing is going over all the bytes in the binary and basically formatting them in a special way, um, as you can see here. So if we now go to this file I piped it into, you can see that the whole binary bytes are basically stored with this DW format. And the reason I'm doing this is because I will use this directly in an assembly file. And we will see that in a bit when I switch to my Windows VM and we actually like using it. All right, so now we're going to write the loader. Um, I'm just going to create a console app here and let's call it Wutai Loader YouTube. Doesn't really matter. Um, of course, in the end, you want to call it something unsuspicious. All right, so let's get started. Um, this is like auto-generated here, so we can throw this away. And I'm just going to put the loader code here and then go over everything to save us some time. All right, so what's actually happening here? Uh, we're doing a couple of includes. This is just disabling warnings. And then we define an extern function, which is called run data. Um, this function is not inside the loader, so we have to create it. And the reason it's called as extern C here is because I'm going to define it in assembly. In order to do this, we go to like build dependencies here, build customizations. And then we add the MASM build customization. And this allows us to define assembly files inside our Visual Studio project, and they will be compiled alongside our other code. 
So now we can do add and add like a file here. Let's just call it data.asm. And then we can basically put an assembly function here. And I'm just going to do it like this, code for the code section. And then we define a function here, run data. And this is basically just how we do it. And this will be the part that we replace later on. But for now, let's just like put a red here. All right, so we have a very basic assembly function here that's basically doing nothing. Let's go back to our loader. Uh, we have the RC4 function here, which is basically just undoing the RC4 encryption we just did on the Linux side. All right, let's go to the main function. You see it's, it's very short. The first thing here is sandbox evasion. We had this already in the Shinra loader. For the basic um, principle how this works is it's just sleeping for five seconds and then looking if really five seconds or close to it have passed because AV will maybe run this in a sandbox and they don't want to wait. So they just fast forward for the sleep function and we can actually detect this. If it runs in a sandbox, we'll just exit. Um, after this evasion thing, um, basically we're just defining the key. Um, you could also do it like as an argument, but yeah, I'm just putting it in the binary for now. And then we have to give it the payload length. Um, this is not the real one, so let's replace that. You can just grab that from here. All right. And what's happening then? Well, we're taking this run data function and using virtual protect to change the memory permissions on it so it's writable. Then we use the RC4 method we just defined to decrypt our shellcode so it becomes runnable again. And then we use virtual protect a second time to just restore the old permissions and then we run the function. So as you can maybe imagine from this code, what we want in this um, run data function is basically our sliver shellcode. And this is the reason we converted this to this format, because this we can now just copy paste inside this um, data.asm file. And then when we compile, we will have our sliver shellcode there. And like, if you wanna do this, it's better to like edit this in Notepad instead of doing it in Visual Studio, because Visual Studio really doesn't like big files. Um, if you paste this converted sliver shellcode here, it will be like 50 megabytes. So Visual Studio really won't like that. So let's just close that here and then actually do it in Notepad. Basically, you just copy over the file and you just copy paste it into the data.asm section. Just like this. And it takes a bit of time, but it's actually not too bad. Um, maybe just a few seconds. And then we can save this. And now we have a big data.asm file here. I'm not going to open it because, like I said, Visual Studio really doesn't like it. Uh, but it doesn't matter as long as we don't open the file. And now we can basically compile it. So again, it's a really simple like loader. We are just defining this external assembly function here. We have our RC4 decryption. We have the sandbox evasion. And then we just call run data, a method inside our own binary. There's no like process injection. There's no create thread. There's really nothing fancy here. We are just calling a function from our own binary. The only like tricky thing here is that the function is actually sliver shellcode and we are decrypting it shortly before we're running it. Um, but other than that, it's really simple. But surprisingly, it's bypassing Defender and Avira. So it's really good for our use case here. Um, another thing you want to do is you want to change some of the compile options. Let's do that together. Um, so first of all, if you go to C++, there is a code generation here and you want to do um, MT here. Then you want to disable the security cookie, the stack cookie. Then we go to um, linker. Well, let's do debugging first. We don't want debugging info here. So let's disable that. Um, yeah, advanced. Okay. We also want to disable dynamic base and data execution prevention. All right. All right, it finished compiling. This took like 10 minutes on my machine just because it takes a long time to compile the assembly file um, because it's just so huge, right? It has to like 50 megabytes. Um, but you only have to do it once, right? Another option um, you have is you could just like fill it with dummy bytes and then later on runtime overwrite it with whatever you need. Um, but I'll leave that to you. If we want to build it again, now it's just super fast, right? Um, even if we like change something here, like add a line, I don't know. It's just building very fast because the ASM file has already been compiled and it doesn't have to do it again. All right. And if we like look at the binary here, 
can see it's roughly the same size as the sliver shell code. And if we like scan it with Windows Defender here, there's no threat detected. So it's safe on disk and also safe on execution, as we will see later on. I'm just going to copy that loader now onto my Linux VM. And then let's log into the virtual desktop environment and actually execute it and see if we can get a shell. So I copied this here and called this OneDrive updater. Let's run a server again like this. Then we have to log in here. Let's go here, start the CMD, then go to Windows Tasks. And then let's run PowerShell. And also now we just want to start the HTTP listener if you don't have it yet. So here in jobs it appears on port 80 because this is where the shellcode will connect to. All right, let's see if we can grab our file. And there's still the web proxy, right? Um, but PowerShell actually knows about that and will use it. So we don't have to worry about that. So you can see it's downloading it just fine through the proxy. Oh, here we are, so let's run it now. And here we go, we got our beacon. Let's make it a session just because, you know, I don't want to wait on these videos. And actually you can also like see that the endpoint that actually worked was the second one. It was the one that's using the Win Enet driver here. All right. And now we just got a normal session here. Okay, just to like prove a point, we can now do things like seatbelt group all. And while this is running, there isn't any detection here, right? This wasn't blocked. There was no pop-up like Avira or Defender found something. It just went through. So no issues at all with this very simple payload. And here we already get the output from Seatbelt. And now we have a beacon and can explore the network further. All right, so that's it for the video. We'll continue progressing through the lab in the next one. I primarily wanted to make this one so people have a loader they can use in the labs and are not stuck on the first machine. Um, for subscribers, there's also the VonLab field manual, which will have the code for the loadup, so you can actually copy paste it and just use it if that's what you want to do. All right, see you next time. Thank you.